What up, it's your boy Dick Incredible Man, and yes, I am back at it again, and this is New Amsterdam Season 3, Episode 6, and I feel like this episode was, it was a good episode, but like, they were trying to handle so much in one episode. Let's talk about it, man. It was a legit episode, 100%. I loved it, and I like how they handled everything, but it just felt like they were trying to do entirely too much. And Max actually had to realize that when Helen told him that. And what I mean by they were doing too much, like, I mean, like, the episode itself concerning Max like, dealing with systemic racism. Like, they were doing so much, and... Sharp actually had to sit Max down and tell him. And I love that because we see that Max is trying to end systemic racism and he's talking to Karen and he's making jokes and he's trying to get her to give him money for a new position. And we learned that the position is already, already exists in New Amsterdam, which is the chief equity officer. Now, we didn't know anything about a chief equity officer the entire time. And it's been two years, two seasons, whatever, when it comes to New Amsterdam, and we didn't know anything about a chief equity officer. Now, we get introduced to her this episode, and her name is Isabel, and we see that Max is trying to end systemic racism, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying uh, before we dived into it. They were doing too much because there's no way that they could have handled you know, systemic racism within the time allotted of this episode or in the course of one day, and that's what Max was trying to come across to do this episode. He he tried to rush it and fix it and keep things moving and, and try to make all this stuff happen in the course of a day. And for us, in the course of like like 58 minutes to an hour. Um, but Helen had to sit him down and tell him that that's not possible. There's no way you can end systemic racism in the course of a day or an hour. And in most situations, Max does pretty good, you know, being... Um, underprepared or overwhelmed or coming and thinking outside of the box in those situations it helps in the process and and a lot of time it works greatly and then he comes up with a better plan in the end to allocate what he actually did in the very beginning so normally it helps and that's max's uh forte and that's where he excels but with systemic racism that's not something that you can do wham bam thank you ma'am and be done with it there's it's such a deep rooted thing inside of america and 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 uh corporations and, and companies and all it's it's so integrated into our society that there's no way you can undo that it, it's been trying to be done for years and and we're still not even making a foot into the doorway but the idea of him you know thinking about all of this is what I love about New Amsterdam because we see that Max is trying to solve all of this whole systemic racism problem in one episode. And when you think about it, he was doing it. He wasn't doing it to make himself feel better, but it was also to actually help the doctors that he actually cared about and his staff and everyone at New Amsterdam. But the thing is, is because Max wasn't listening when he done it. He just, he, something happened and we didn't learn what happened until the end of the episode. And that is the fact that, he was on the train and this woman and her son were on the train with him and um, her son was running around playing and this dude yelled at him, yelled at the, the little boy, was like, um, hey lady, control your kid. And Max, he did, even in the moment, he didn't realize that it was racism and it could have not been, sure, because you know a lot of people don't like uh, dealing with a bunch of kids anyway. But Max also thought about the process of well, when I have Luna with me and she's running around freely on the train, no one ever says anything. But because this black woman had her black son run around on the train, this dude said, hey, lady, control your kid. And that, it didn't even register to Max that it was racism until he gotten off the train. And But at that point, it was too late for him to do anything. But that made him kind of reevaluate what was going on at work as well. And then he went there with his whole new cool mindset. And that's cool. And that's legit. And I feel like, Everybody should have that, you know, that aha moment to realize that, hey, man, yeah, you know what? This ain't right. Some people, you know, they, they realized it from the very get go. Some people, it takes some time and then they realize that, OK, you know what? that This ain't right. But Max had his aha moment and not even the fact that he was racist because we know how he feels about Sharp. 
and that even in this episode even uh, allocated that a little bit like we see them kind of getting a little bit closer in the moments when he was talking to her when she was in the bathroom like these they had these real close moments like well i can't do it without you without you there would be no me without you we wouldn't be able to do this so like there's a lot of reasons you know we know max ain't, ain't racist by, by any means but it's just like that whole i want i don't want to say nonchalantly but like that whole oh i didn't see it just until now moment you know that aha moment and with that he goes to work to try to handle that systemic racism but it's so integrated and the chief equity officer um isabel is trying to tell him that well maybe you know max you're the problem and he realizes that a little bit as well coming from isabel and when he's actually talking to sharp when she tells him that max you're not listening. You're trying to solve this um, constantly on the go and, and do this and do this. You're not listening. And I feel like the perfect example is when he called all of the white doctors and, you know, uh, this, this has the high pay raise into the closet office to have a conversation. And they were like, well, we'll just talk to HCC, you know, to increase the budget for all of these other doctors, you know, for the black doctors and the Latino and Hispanic. Hispanic and, and Asian doctors they just call HCC and instead of just taking it out of their cut because I'm gonna be 100% with you no doctor is willing to just drop their whole you know their 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 um their money or their 10% you know just to give it to someone else sure that's the right thing to do but in that moment I'm if I was a black doctor I'm not willing to give my 10% away but if Max had came in with a, a legitimate plan because as, at that moment he didn't have a plan all of this was just flying off the top of his head and flying by the seat of his pants, he was like, oh, yeah, 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 this is a great idea. Oh, let me do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that was nice, like taking the pictures off the wall and getting rid of uh, some of the uh, statues and all the other stuff. That was a nice concept and a nice thought and a great idea, but he didn't have a legitimate plan, so that's how it fell flat when he was in the closet with all of the other doctors trying to get them to give up 10% of their salary. Nobody's willing to do this if you don't even have a legitimate plan, he didn't have any kind of foundation to stand on. And then after that, Helen told him he should listen. And we see like a montage of Max talk, well, the camera talking to a whole bunch of other doctors and how they feel about this and patients and everything else about systemic racism in America. And it was just like a heartwarming feeling, if you will, because you get to see everybody's perspective. Everybody has a different perspective. And that was shown through all of these different people that we saw, saw <laughs> that we saw in that moment. And it also made Max realize some things as well. It's like, okay, you know what? I may have been doing this wrong. And then it kind of registered with him. And he ended up talking to Isabel at the end of the episode. And he now, him not knowing what to do is the thing that is the thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause he was trying to solve a problem that, you know, he really couldn't relate to, but don't look at it as like a, a savior or something like that. You know, it's a problem. Don't don't look for an immediate solution because there is no immediate solution. But that's, I could talk about that forever, man. That's so much going on with that whole situation. But him and Sharp kind of had that moment at the end of the episode too, where he was like, well, thank you. You're always there. And she told him that she's stepping down as deputy medical director because now we know that sharp has invited her niece to move to new york with her now we see the entire episode that she's talking to her niece because her niece is upset you know their father died and sharp is trying to get her to move to dubai and or yeah yeah dubai and all this other stuff because she is not really going to be bothered with her but she can help her in any situation that arises and the girl doesn't want to move she's talking about marrying her boyfriend there's a lot of stuff going on with that but sharp gets this bright idea to invite her to stay with her because she sees that, uh, what's her name? I think it's Mina, Diana, something like, I think it's Mina. But anyway, she sees that she's hurting and at the idea of moving to New York with her aunt, she's excited. And then boom, bam, sharp back pedals because she has a lot of stuff on her plate. But I, I like the situation where she tells Max that, you know, she's going to step down. And she even broke up with Shin to help her niece. And I feel like Shin is a little hurt, but honestly, I really don't care because I feel like after this week's episode and last week's episode, we see that Sharp and Max are getting closer than ever. And they still can't quite admit their feelings to each other because you know, there's so many other obstacles in the way, but I haven't given up hope. And I love the fact that her and Sharp, I mean, her and um, Cassian broke up and I, it's sad, but like, I'm okay with it because I want her and Max together 
anyway. But we see Sharp also giving Max the, uh, you know, the 411 as in what's going on with systemic racism and him, the fact that he should be listening more. Now, we also deal with <sighs> Iggy this episode, dealing with some kid that is being abusive to some of the other kids. And I thought I kind of had the whole idea of what was happening going on with the little girl. Um, I can't remember the one that he was playing chess with. I thought she was like the whole ringleader person, but it turns out that this dude was trying to force this other girl to hold his hand because he wanted to be her boyfriend or, or something I'm assuming. And the other little girl, which it seems like she, she is not the one to play with. Like she's like, yeah, I'm playing the game by the rules. I haven't lost yet. And if I, I heard her because he's my, she's my friend. Like, okay, I ain't messing with her. And the, and the way she was giving Iggy the little, the little mean eyes, like what? Like, I thought she was going to hit Iggy at any moment. <laughs> but we see that, like, there's something wrong with her. But at the same time, she had, like, the right thought process to help her friend. But injuring another child isn't the way to go. But I'm I'm kind of interested in what's going on with her because I need more about her. Because her and Iggy's whole interaction this episode really made me want to know what's going on with her. And I was super intrigued. They didn't really give us much as to what's going on. They just kind of solved that case that was going on with her. And that's what I meant by the episode was actually kind of doing a lot because it really focused on a lot of other stuff and some stuff kind of dwindled down in the, in the background just a little bit. Now, the systemic racism was highlight of this episode. Um, Iggy's whole little side quest, it showed it, but it kind of like, oh, well, boom, bam, here this is. And then it, it sits on the side and, oh, we'll give you a resolution, but then that's it. Now, Bloom and Reynolds both had a whole kind of case that kind of tied in together again this week and with his father-son duo being injured in this whole crash and everything that Superman came to save. And we get introduced to this character that he, you know, he's running around the hospital trying to help these people. And he actually helped in the situation of the bus, of the bus crash and that he wanted to be a firefighter or a carp or a soldier, but he just wasn't quite fit for it. Like he wasn't, that he didn't meet the height requirements. So he decided to put on a cape and be a hero. And we see that Bloom kind of feels a certain type of way with him dressing up, being a hero and helping people because he's running around the ER trying to do it at the same time. And by the end of the episode, we see that after she kind of talked to him a little bit and gained some insight to his character and to him as a person, we see that Bloom realizes that, you know what? I was wrong. And I feel like Bloom is the one that's, shining more in season three than anybody else don't get me wrong i'm glad that reynolds is back and max is doing his thing and sharp and max is back on almost the same level and we see dr ko or ka however you want to say it um filling um uh vj's position and iggy's doing his thing and he's handling his health but i feel like bloom is getting like the highlight of season three and she's really putting in the work and we see her progressing each week as a character and i feel like that's the highlight of new amsterdam for me because bloom is developing so much more as a character um but we see that she gives him the respect at the towards the middle of the end of the episode she's like yeah yeah you don't always have to, you know, uh, stand out to be a hero. You know, you can do your thing. You can do your thing, man. She gives him a little of the fist bump to the chest, and he still got his Superman curl going on. And we find out that he has a brain, a brain bleed, and they, they fix it, and the surgery goes well. But it was too late by the time they actually took him to the OR and everything. Like, he had done had the brain bleed for a minute, and it didn't help him, and he ended up dying. But it also tied into Reynolds' case because – well, Reynolds and Cassian, um, the the son of the the dude that he helped save from the bus crash and all that other stuff, his heart had given out on the operating table, but they kept him alive. They put him on bypass, and they didn't really have a heart. And when that happened, I knew instantly. I was like, you know what? Superman is going to give dude his heart because um, – his body didn't quite develop and he's not, you know, like tall or anything. So his body type would be perfect for that kid that, you know, had like a special condition for the heart that he needed and everything. So like it tied in very nicely. It was easy to see a mile off that was what was coming, but it was nice because it helped Reynolds deal with some stuff that he was dealing with as well, because we see that he was a little heartbroken that he couldn't help the, the kid anyway, because the father didn't wish to take another kid's life to help his kids. So like there was a lot of stuff going on, but in the end of the day, we see that it was a nice resolution overall for the kid. And we get to see a lot of stuff dealing with bloom. And I felt like it was a nice overall episode. I just felt like, you know, they really focus heavily on the uh, systemic racism, which is not a bad thing, but like everything else kind of just got like the back burner compared to the systemic racism. And they didn't really touch on everything quite as enough 
because sure Max did all this other stuff, but I feel like all of the other stuff was just as important. Like the stuff with Iggy's case, I kind of really wanted more of that, and it kind of got pushed aside for the systemic racism. But I, like I said, it was a good thing and it handled it. And New Amsterdam does that kind of well, if you ask me. But that was the episode and I felt like it was a wonderful episode. And this review is actually way longer than it was supposed to be. But like there was so much more to talk about at the very beginning of the systemic racism and everything else. But like I said, I enjoy it each week because I love New Amsterdam, man. This is really incredible. Don't forget to smash the like button until you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe. But only if you really want to, man. Peace out. Okay.